The Chicago White Sox are down to their last two spring training games and have started to make some decisions with more to follow. Word has spread that Lurie Garcia will not be on the opening day roster and that Oscar Colas, as well as Hanser Alberto, will make the ball club. Dylan Cease has been named the opening day starter, and he had a nice tune-up against Oakland on Friday. Andrew Vaughn is feeling good and should return to action soon. We are just days away from the start of the 2023 season. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Lockdown White Sox. Thank you for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Lockdown White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your baseball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up in the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost uh, to their franchise when using the promo locked on in the game. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, uh, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On White Sox. We've got baseball this week, actual baseball, the regular season Starting so very, very soon, about a year ago, uh, I made my debut right here uh, on Lockdown White Sox, and I thank you so much. Uh, whether you've been with me uh, since the beginning or you are uh, you joined halfway or you're just coming in now with the season uh, days away, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for passing this podcast along uh, to other White Sox fans in your life. Uh, get those questions and comments in to LockedOnSox at gmail.com. Uh, Our Chicago White Sox uh, have a 12-13 spring training record with a few ties, uh, just two games left uh, before a day off, and then, of course, kicking things off against uh, the Houston Astros in Houston on March 30th. Well, uh, since the last time we talked, the uh, Chicago White Sox finalized uh, their starting rotation, how that's going to look. Uh, going uh, through Houston and then into the home opener. And then we know, of course, who's going to be starting opening day. Not a huge surprise, but Dylan Cease, it's been made official. Uh, his first opening day start, it's going to be against uh, Framber uh, Valdez of the Houston Astros. We'll set everything up uh, between those two uh, as that game gets closer. But after Cease, it'll be Lance Lynn. Uh, then Lucas Giolito, Mike Clevenger will get the series finale uh, against Houston. And then Michael Kopech uh, has got the home opener against the Giants uh, a week from today. Cannot wait for that. Uh, some other news and notes on that uh, home opener. There will be the car parade. Uh, I think it went away maybe for a year or so uh, due to COVID, but uh, if you haven't seen it before, this is an opportunity uh, where cars enter uh, through that center field wall and drive on the warning track with players that uh, are on the opening day roster, including, uh, you know, Pedro Grifol. He'll have his, his uh, first chance to be in a car paraded around, so get there early for the car parade. Uh, and also, A.J. Przinsky will be throwing out the first pitch uh, next Monday. Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, also, Davis Martin... Uh, was optioned. Uh, he'll st uh, start the year in Charlotte. Uh, I thought this was a great article by James Fegan uh, in The Athletic last week uh, entitled, What We Can Learn from White Sox Manager Pedro Grifol's Spring Media Sessions. Uh, and I've said it uh, quite a bit, and I've said it to other folks anytime they ask me, you know, how is this season going to go? And what do you think of Pedro Grifol? And 
you know, the more I hear him talk and, and the more I hear, you know, his philosophy, uh, the more I like. And this was some good stuff specifically about lineups. And we saw so many different lineups from Tony La Russa uh, last year. If you were with me uh, here on Lockdown uh, last season, I was trying to count and keep a tally of how many different lineups in a row uh, were thrown out there. And, and maybe it wasn't you know completely out of the ordinary uh, throughout baseball, but I personally thought it was really bizarre. Uh, there just wasn't a consistency. And I get it. There was some injuries, but I thought there were times where you could throw out a lineup three, four days in a row uh, and see how that went. Well, this is what Pedro Grafol uh, had to say in that athletic article about lineups. Uh, I don't like to rotate lineups. It uh, doesn't mean I won't. Uh, when you have a team like ours and you have seven or eight everyday players, comfort is good too. Them knowing exactly where they're going to hit, what their job is, that's a thing too. But it's not going to be a stubborn thing. Uh, Grafol has spoken repeatedly about having a fairly large slate of everyday guys uh, such that it would shape his preference for bench selections to be specialists. Uh, Grafal also said recently, our backup shortstop plays second base for us every day. So it's not really a pressing need to have a utility player on our bench that is a shortstop. Uh, we are not pressed to do that. Uh, would it be a value? Yeah, maybe. Not of great value, but of some value. Uh, so Sunday, some things started to come into focus, especially if you really uh, paid attention to some of those quotes in the last few days and week from Pedro Grafol. Uh, so Oscar Colas is in. Uh, that's what we're being told. He's going to make the opening day roster. And the rumor uh, is that Hanser Alberto is in and Lurie Garcia will not make the opening day roster. Uh, this is the first time since 2013 uh, where Lurie Garcia will not be on the White Sox opening day roster. Longest tenured White Sox player, uh, no more. Look, I have had my issues with Lurie Garcia. I've talked about it uh, just kind of therapeutically almost uh, on this podcast. And he filled a role and he had some big moments, namely that home run in game three of the ALDS a few seasons ago. I just thought he was used uh, in incorrect ways uh, last year. And that set him up for some failure. And it, that he just, you know, he wasn't put in, in spots to succeed. And he did not have a very good uh, spring training at all. I think he was uh, also hurt a little bit last season. Uh, and I, I think that mattered. It absolutely mattered. And, and with some money left and some years left on the contract, uh, the Sox, I, I, I think they're going to continue to move forward without Lurie Garcia, which is kind of shocking to a lot of us. I, I just didn't think the Sox were eventually, when it came down to it, uh, going to let that happen uh, when there's money owed and, and years owed on the contract. Uh, this is from Daryl Van Scoven of the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, the White Sox have not announced their opening day roster, but a source confirmed to the Sun-Times Sunday that infielder Lurie Garcia the longest tenured player on the team will not be on it. Uh, Garcia, 32, who signed a three-year, $16.5 million contract before last season, struggled throughout the 2022 season. Uh, indications around the Sox clubhouse Sunday morning were that prospect Oscar Colas uh, will make the team as its right fielder, as expected, and that relievers Nick Avila and Brian Shaw will not make the team. Avila was a Rule 5 draft pick, but did not have a strong spring, allowing eight runs in 10 innings over seven appearances. Shaw, a non-roster invitee who performed well, uh, 1.08 ERA, was released from his minor league contract. Avila not making the bullpen opens the door for right-hander Gregory Santos, who did not allow a run in seven appearances to take the final spot behind right-handers Kendall Graveman, Joe Kelly, Ronaldo Lopez, Jimmy Lambert, and Jose Ruiz, and lefties Aaron Bummer and Jake Diekman. I've been talking about Gregory Santos. He's got a rocket for an arm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he's the guy. Everybody here is committed to putting the best team on the field. Manager Pedro Grafol said Sunday morning when asked about financial considerations affecting roster decisions. I noticed that in my interview 
uh, that with the front office on a daily basis, the commitment to win and put the best team on the field is real. Uh, Grafol also said in regards to the 2023 season, just watch us play. Uh, give us a chance. Watch us play and develop your opinions on this year. Nothing in the past. Just a clear, clean view and evaluate us on what's happening now. So uh, with Lurie out and Hanser, Alberto most likely in, I got to start thinking about, was this one of those situations of Grafol's guys? You know, the whole the old saying, if you want me to cook the meal, let me buy the groceries. There's some guys on this White Sox team that were just untouchable. When Pedro Grafol came in, you're not going to move these guys. These are core guys, you know, but I'm starting to feel like Pedro Grafol had a lot to say in the specialists uh, categories. He likes to say the utility bench roles. You know, I do believe that spring training stats matter. They've got to matter somewhat with these fringe guys, you know, these guys that are fighting for a roster spot. Uh, and it sure seemed to happen that way for Hanser Alberto. If he makes this club, he earned it. He has put up a uh, one heck of a spring training. Uh, and if, you know, I, I mean, with Lurie Garcia, if he put up those types of numbers, you know, maybe we're having a different conversation and it's flip-flopped. I, I don't know. You know, it, it's just, he really earned this spot, Alberto. And I just, you know, they could be one of Grafol's guys. You know, this is a guy I knew from Kansas City. This is a guy I wanted the White Sox to bring in. I mean, Grafol has said so much uh, on his uh, clubhouse presence and what he can do and bring to the club. Uh, again, like Lurie Garcia filled a role, but I just feel like there are other players that can fill that role in, in, a, in a better way. And, uh, you know, again, I, I wish Lurie Garcia luck. Uh, but I think it's time. It's time to move on. And uh, again, we'll see what other bench roles uh, you know, are, dis are established soon uh, with only a few more games left of spring training uh, before that off day. And then regular season gets going March 30th. Uh, White Sox had a lot of offense this past weekend and got a few solid pitching outings as the final adjustments are being made. Uh, more on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Hey, I'm really excited about our new partner and sponsor of today's episode, the mobile game, Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your professional baseball franchise? Uh, well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team. Play through the season and lead your team to glory. Uh, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, scouting and drafting players, navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. Uh, all this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. Uh, now is your chance to prove that you can be a more confident than Rick Hahn. No guarantee that you'll have as much job security as him, but it'll be fun to have a seat at the table over and over again. Uh, hopefully you set the market and be proactive instead of reactive. Locked on White Sox listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com. Scan the code or look it up in the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, White, White Sox scored a ton of runs uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, they kicked things off against Oakland on Friday. 12 to nothing, they beat them. Uh, James Fegan summed it up well on Twitter. Uh, White Sox chased A's opening day starter Kyle Muller uh, with a pair of four inning, four run innings. Yoan Mancata and Romy Gonzalez both homered. Uh, Luis Robert had two doubles. Aloy Jimenez and Tim Anderson both uh, had two hits. Uh, I was watching this game on the MLB app, and and wow, I mean, Sox came out early uh, with some thunder. Uh, and again, it was off of Oakland's opening day starter, Kyle Muller. So I think it, it, it meant something. It, it meant a little bit. Uh, but it is Oakland, after all. Uh, Sox offense, 12 runs, 15 hits, 
eight extra base hits, and the Sox were six for 12 with runners in scoring position. Uh, Dylan Cease on the hill, pretty nice outing. Six innings, four hits, zero runs, three walks, five strikeouts. His spring ERA, 7.31. Uh, Dylan Cease commented on being named opening day starter. Uh, it means a lot, Cease said after the game. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of reflecting in the upcoming week, thinking about my journey. It's one of those really incredible honors, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, being a kid and playing, then playing in high school and getting through the minor leagues, it's just a lot of steps, uh, Cease said. When you make it, it almost doesn't feel real. It's definitely one of the special things. To get to the big leagues is always a dream, but all these things that keep happening on top of each other is just making it more and more special. It's a challenging game, C said. Thankfully, as a pitcher, I'm more the casino than I am the gambler, but it's still challenging. Uh, on Friday's outing against Oakland, uh, this is what C said to say, it was a great long tune-up. Got my curveball out there a lot. Slider was pretty solid. I don't like the three walks, but a lot of double plays and some good weak contact. Getting through six is good. I think we're right where we need to be. Uh, Joe Kelly and then Aaron Bummer, uh, the debut of Aaron Bummer, uh, long anticipated. Uh, he threw an inning of uh, one-hit baseball, which was nice to see. And then Kendall Graveman also threw. On Saturday, Sox took care of the Cincinnati Reds 9-2. to two. Uh, Lance Lynn was on the hill. He went four and two thirds innings altogether. Uh, five hits, two earned runs, two walks, six strikeouts. His spring ERA 4.30. Uh, uh, Fegan's comments on Lance Lynn went like this: uh, How is how is it going from pitching uh, in the World Baseball Classic to the Cactus League game? That's what Fegan asked Lynn. Uh, that was completely boring. Uh, Dead pan Lance Lynn. Lynn said he was playing around with his sweeper in different sequences early just to get uh, some use out of it, but got into a groove for the final four innings. So there you go. Uh, going from his situation against, I believe it was Venezuela in the World Baseball Classic, then coming back uh, to Glendale or to Arizona just to get some work. Uh, you know, I think he, I think he's ready uh, for the Houston series. He's locked in. I've really enjoyed watching him this spring, and it seems like he is healthy, which was much different uh, from last year. Uh, Perez, Lambert, Lopez, Ruiz, and Ramsey uh, came in as well. Sox pitching struck out 13 Cincinnati Reds and only issued two walks. Uh, White Sox offense, nine runs, 14 hits, doubles from Hanser, Alberto, and Garcia. Remillard had a home run and had a five RBI day. Sox were five for seven with runners in scoring position. Uh, Sunday, uh, Sox fell to the Colorado Rockies four to two. Giolito uh, getting some uh, fine tuning in before the season starts. He was on the hill, a uh, five and one third innings, four hits, one earned run. Uh, just one walk, six strikeouts. His spring ERA, 3.07. Uh, recently, Giolito talked about the spring weather and how it's been feeling. Uh, usually, spring training in Arizona is sun shining and it's 80 degrees, but it hasn't been that way this spring, uh, Giolito said recently. It's a better preparation for when we get back to Chicago and Detroit and all those places in April. So, yeah, I liked it. Uh, and right now, the early home opener forecast uh, for the White Sox, 56 degrees, windy and overcast. That will probably change, but you know I'm checking that out already. Uh, in particular, Giolito likes where his off-speed pitches are. Change of curveball slider, he said. I'm liking the swings that I'm getting, keeping guys off balance, especially with the slider, uh, using it to lefties and righties. It's been a really good pitch for me, just developing that. Being able to make adjustments during each outing, I feel like I've had to make quick adjustments, and I've been able to do that, to be able to get out of some situations and keep it going. So it's been a very productive spring. Uh, after Gio, uh, Jake Diekman, Ruiz, Santos, and Morin, uh, Sox offense on Sunday, two runs, 12 hits, Sheets with a double, and Zavala with his fifth home run of the spring. Uh, Sox were 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. Uh, Andrew Vaughn should be back in action soon, and I've got some updates on what other lockdown hosts are saying about our Chicago White Sox. Uh, more on that in a moment. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Uh, the Built Bar Madness Bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now it's your time to make it count. Go to Built uh, MarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know, I'm going to be voting for Double Chocolate Puff. Uh, so go out and support your favorite Built Bar or Puff. And when you vote uh, for your favorite bar or Puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky lockdown listeners will get a free box of Built. Uh, not only that, but one lockdown fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or Puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. Uh, if you have not already, you got to try Built. Uh, Built the best protein bar ever. Uh, they are so amazing. You won't think they're good for you. Uh, what makes Built Bars and Puffs so good? For starters, they are high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100% a real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. So run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. Uh, you can vote every day in March. So hop in and support your pick. Got some injuries uh, and some updates. Uh, so, Johan Mankata returned on Friday. He hit a home run early in the game against Oakland, which, which was a great sign. But then he left Sunday's game against the Rockies in the second inning. White Sox said it was lower back stiffness uh, day to day. But then early evening on Sunday, Scott Merkin uh, tweeted, Mankata with a smile and a thumbs up, uh, talking about his back, feel good, not bad. There's the update, Merkin said. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, Andrew Vaughn played in a minor league game uh, over the weekend, could be in the lineup against the Cubs on Monday. According to Van Scoven of the Sun-Times, an upbeat Andrew Vaughn said his back felt normal on Saturday. A bright piece of news for the White Sox as they near opening day, hoping to be at full strength a day after batting three times in Dashing at full speed from second base to home as the designated hitter in a minor league game. Andrew Vaughn played first base in another minor league game Saturday and went one for four. He will likely play Monday against the Cubs, uh, against the Cubs in the Sox second to last Cactus League game. It'll be Vaughn's first since March 12th uh, when his back tightened up. He tried to move through it and stretch. It was like, yeah, this one's a little tighter. Uh, Vaughn said, we took it slow, and I feel like I'm in a really good place right now. I was glad to be out there just trying to be smart. I'd rather play 162 games than blow out in spring training and not be able to play opening day Thursday uh, in Houston. Uh, how about some national predictions? There's really not a lot of love for the White Sox. Uh, we heard about Will Leach uh, of MLB.com. He did took the, take the White Sox to win the AL Central, win 90 games. Uh, but other than that, there is not a lot of love. There's a lot of doubt uh, if this team can stay healthy, and I get that. It's well-deserved. Uh, locally, uh, Chicago Tribune put out an MLB preview uh, section of their Sunday newspaper, which they do every year, profiling every team, and then a, a bunch of columnists make some predictions locally and nationally. Uh, Luis Robert was the focus in the, in the Trib layout, uh, Dylan Cease, Yasmani Grandal, and Tim Anderson were listed as ones to watch. Uh, there were only, there was only one columnist, and he was from Baltimore, that took the White Sox to win the AL Central. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of national buzz on Tim Anderson being the player that the White Sox can't afford to lose. Uh, it's an interesting discussion, and unfortunately, we've had to have that over the last several seasons. Uh, what player from the core? Can the Sox just, they, they just can't afford to lose for an extended period of time. And we saw what happened to the White Sox uh, last season when Tim Anderson went down. Uh, they just they, they just didn't have it. They just ran out of steam. So uh, Tim Anderson being named as that guy, and, and I would agree. I mean, he at the top of that lineup gets everything going. Uh, and, you know, what we've seen, he's only gotten better and better offensively. Hopefully that defense uh, stays uh, can get solid uh, as well. Uh, I had an opportunity uh, just a few days ago. It was on Friday. I got together with the other hosts, uh, uh, the other AL Central lockdown hosts, and uh, there is there is no love uh, for the Chicago White Sox. I was the only one, of course, defending the White Sox and saying, "Look, uh, Pedro Grifol is saying the right things. He's got this. He's got these guys playing the right way. He's focusing on fundamentals. He's sweating the small stuff." He's brought in a good coaching staff. 
Uh, and it sounds like players are clicking. It sounds like they get it. This is different uh, this year. Bit of a chip on our shoulders. And again, it comes down to health. But I just don't see another team in this division uh, beating this lineup if we are healthy uh, from top to bottom. And I'll take our top three arms. Uh, I mean, I'll take our, our top five uh, against any team in the AL Central, but de definitely our top three. You know, Cleveland is the defending champs. You don't have to worry about the Royals or the Tigers at all. It's really Guardians, uh, Twins, and White Sox. And uh, what the uh, lockdown Minnesota Twins host is pitching is is depth. And I get that. The Twins have got a lot of depth. They went out and, and filled a lot of spots. And, you know, Cleveland's got a, a well-touted uh, farm system. And, you know, can they get the same production out of some of the guys that they did last year? I think Cleveland is a well-run organization. And, you know, Terry Francona is an outstanding manager. Uh, but I'm telling you, I, I just I just think this White Sox, I think a lot of this White Sox team, I really do. Uh, and if they're coming in healthy, if they're coming in hungry, and they do play with some urgency. And Pedro Grifol, you know, does try to implement some consistency like he has talked about uh, and harping on the little things. Uh, and trying to take advantage of the opposition whenever they can. Uh, and, and we have a healthy pitching staff. Bullpen's a little questionable. It's a little shaky right now. Uh, so I will give you that. And, and we'll see what some of these reserve guys can bring. Okay. I know there's going to be a lot of fans. They're like, well, who is this Hans or Alberto guy? And, you know, let me see what you got, Oscar Colas. Uh, and Andrew Vaughn, you got some big shoes to fill. You know, you better live up to it. Uh, so there are some big expectations, but health first and foremost, and I think everything will take care of itself. I really do. Uh, I believe that episode uh, should be dropping sometime this week, and it might be through Lockdown MLB, but I'll keep you updated on that. Uh, folks, thank you so very much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast. We are on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore uh, GGTV. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and get your questions in for this week's mailbag, LockedOnSox at gmail.com. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. Now, for your second listen, check out the Lockdown Fantasy Baseball. Uh, win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Lockdown Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, on the next episode, I'll continue to bring you the latest happenings, especially with regards to the roster from Glendale, Arizona's The White Sox inch closer to opening day. Appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.